Hello, in this video we're going to go over a problem from IMO 2021. This is a shortlisted problem. It's uh, problem A3, which means it was a problem that was proposed to appear in International Math Olympiad, but it didn't quite make it. Okay, so here's the problem. Given a positive integer n, find the smallest value of floor of a1 over 1, floor of a2 over 2, all the way to floor of an over n, over all permutations of 1 through n. At this point, you may want to pause the video, think about the problem, and come back and watch the rest of the video. My strategy is to think about this problem basically out loud, uh, tell you exactly how I work on the problem, what are the things that would work, what are the things that would not work, and then we finally get to a solution. Okay, so let's just start with different values of n. For n equals 1, the answer is just 1 because the sum is just always 1. And let's just say xn is the minimum value of this expression. So let's call it xn. So x1 is 1. For n equals 2, you have two permutations, 1 over 1, 2 over 2. And the second one is 2 over 1 plus 1 over 2. And in fact, these two give you the same thing. And both of them give you one, give you two, so x two is in fact two. Then I wrote down a few more of these, and I realized at some point I'm not going to keep writing down, down more of these, but I'll tell you the main idea that I got. I realized that when I take let's say n equals seven, if I look at the last one, if I look at seven, let's just say seven appears in the fourth term. So let's say it's four, uh, seven over four. So what do we have prior to that? Prior to that, I have a1 over 1, a2 over 2, a3 over 3. And then I have 7 over 4, and then I have the rest of them. So a5 over 5, a6 over 6, and a7 over 7. What I know is that these three terms are at least x3. This term is whatever it is. In this case, it is 1. So I get this whole thing is at least x3 plus 1. So that tells me that x7 is at least x3 plus 1. Now, can x7 be equal to x3 one, x3 plus 1? In fact, the answer is yes. How do we make it equal to x3 plus 1? We are going to choose a permutation, let's say b1, b2, b3, a permutation of... 1, 2, 3, that floor of b1 over 1 plus floor of b2 over 2 plus floor of b3 over 3 is the exact minimum that we were looking for, is x3. And we don't know what that is. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can find x7 in terms of the previous terms. I can choose a, a permutation that gives me x3. Now I'm going to consider b1, b2, b3, and then 7, and then for the rest of them, I'm going to choose the numbers that are uh, more than 3, so 4, 5, and 6. If you look at this permutation, when you evaluate the expression for this permutation, we get b1 over 1, b2 over 2, b3 over 3, 7 over 4, and watch what happens for the rest of them. The rest of them are going to give you 0. So what that means is, this whole expression is going to be, this guy is x3, and this guy is 1, so that gives you x3 plus 1. So in other words, it looks like I can find x7 in terms of the previous terms. So this was the case when a4 was 7. Now if a5 is 7, so if you have a 7 here, 5 here, then you can say the previous terms, a1 over 1, all the way to a 4 over 4, these 4 are at least x4, this one is whatever that is, in this case it's 1, and the rest of them are at least 0. So this is at least x4 plus 1. So if you do that, then, and we also know that it can be equal to x4 plus 1 by the same argument that we made above, which means it looks like x7 is equal to the minimum of these numbers. If 7 is equal to a1, I would get 7. If 7 is equal to a2, I would get x1 plus 7 over 2. If 7 is equal to a3, I would get x2 plus 7 over 3. 
if 7 is equal to a4, I would get x3 plus 7 over 4, etc. So if you do that, then we would be able to find x7. Now at that point, I started writing down um, x's in terms of the previous terms, and then I started evaluating them. So if you do that, and I'm going to just write down what I found, x1 is going to end up being 1, that's what we did in the beginning. x2 end up, ends up being 2, again, that's what we did before. x3 ends up being 2 as well. x4, if you apply the recursion that we just found, it's going to end up being 3. x5, x6, and x7 also are going to give me 3. And if you evaluate x8, you realize that that gives you 4. At this point, it is pretty clear that the jumps happen at powers of 2. There's a jump at 2 going from 1 to 2. There's a jump at 4, and there's a jump at 8. So this means it looks like xn is equal to the seeding of log of n plus 1 base 2. Because the first one would give you 1 plus 1, which is 2. Log of 2 base 2 is 1. Ceiling of that is 1. Ceiling of log of 3 base 2 is 2. Ceiling of log of 5 base 2 is 3. Ceiling of log of 9 base 2 is 4, etc. So this is the claim. It looks like the answer is this. Okay, so now to justify this, we will have to prove the recursion and then prove this one by induction. So the claim, the first claim is this. The first claim is that xn is equal to the minimum of xk plus floor of n over k plus 1, where k ranges from 0 to n minus 1. And I'm going to choose x0 to be just 0, because that matches what we wanted. OK, so this is the claim. And the proof is basically the same thing as what I just talked about. If you take a permutation a1 through a n, a permutation of 1 through n, then there are several possibilities for n. n would be 1 of the a1 through a n. Let's just say a k plus 1 is n. Now, if you write down floor of a1 over 1 plus floor of a k over k plus n over k plus 1 plus the rest of them, a k plus 2 over k plus 2, etc. a n over n. The first k terms, because they are all distinct integers, that would be at least x k. Because x k was the minimum uh, for any permutation. a1 through a k may be even larger than 1 through k. So it's even better, but they are all distinct. I'm going to keep the next term, and I'm going to replace everything else by 0. OK, so what I showed is that the permutations are all greater than or equal to this quantity for one of those k's, n over k plus 1. Now, I'm going to show that, in fact, the equality does hold. So how does the equality hold? So suppose floor of b1 over 1 all the way to bk over k is equal to xk for some permutation b1 through bk of 1 through k. So suppose that's, uh, that gives you the minimum. Then consider this permutation. So consider b1 through bk, then n, and then k plus 1 all the way to n minus 1. If you look at b1 over 1 all the way to bk over k, n over k plus 1, k plus 1 over k plus 2, all the way to n minus 1 over n. This gives you, the first k terms give you xk, and the next term is n over k plus 1. So, every permutation that we have, the sum is greater than or equal to xk plus n over k plus 1 for some k. And there's always one permutation that the equality holds. And that's exactly what we wanted. So therefore, in fact, xn is the minimum of all of these quantities. xk plus n over k plus 1, where k ranges from 0 to n minus 1. OK, so we have this equality. Now we're going to prove the main claim. So we, we will now prove xn is in fact the ceiling of log of 
n plus 1, base 2. Okay, and we'll do that by induction. First of all, for x1, that's pretty clear. x1 is 1, which is ceiling of log of 2 base 2. So that's clear. Okay, so let's call ceiling of log of n plus 1 base 2 by m. So this means n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 to the power of m, greater than 2 to the power of m, minus 1. Now we are going to uh, prove that if look at you look at x k plus floor of n over k plus one that would be at least m and then we'll show that in fact it's equal to m for some k. So if k is between n minus one and zero, then we know what x k is. X k is the ceiling of log of k plus one base two. This is by inductive hypothesis. So now so k plus 1, we're going to write down k plus 1 is between 2 to the power of xk and 2 to the power of xk minus 1. Now we are going to look at xk plus floor of n over k plus 1. So this is at least xk plus, okay, so what I know is n is at least 2 to the power of m minus 1. From the inequality that I have up here, n must be at least 2 to the power of m minus 1. k plus 1 is at most 2 to the power of xk. So I have this inequality. And this gives me xk plus 2 to the power of m minus xk minus 1. But this is greater than or equal to xk plus m minus xk. This is a pretty simple inequality. So here I'm using the fact that 2 to the power of r minus 1 is greater than or equal to r for every positive integer r. And this is very easy to prove uh, by induction. Okay, so what I showed is xn is in fact greater than or equal to m. Now I wanted to prove the equality, so I will have to provide an example of a permutation that gives me the equality. And for that, we're going to use inductive hypothesis again. Okay, so let b1 through b to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 be a permutation of 1 through 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 with x sub 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 equal to floor of b1 over 1 all the way to floor of b sub 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1. Okay, so notice that n plus 1 was more than 2 to the power of m minus 1 and was less than or equal to 2 to the power of m, which means n is greater than 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1. So I can use that by inductive hypothesis. So if you choose that, now we know by inductive hypothesis x sub 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 is the ceiling of log of 2 to the power of m minus 1 base 2. And that is m minus 1. So now I'm going to provide a permutation of 1 through n. And this is the permutation. So if you look at b1 through b sub 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1, throw in n here and then keep writing down the other terms that are left over 2 to the power of m minus 1 all the way to n minus 1. If you take a look at this one, then floor of b1 over 1 all the way to b sub 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of m minus 1 minus 1 plus n over 2 to the power of m minus 1 plus 2 to the power of m minus 1 over 2 to the power of m minus 1 plus 1. Notice that in, the, in this part of the sum, everything is 0. So this portion is m minus 1. This portion is just 1 and this portion is all 0. And the reason that the n over 2 to the power of m minus 1 is 1 is that n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 to the power of m greater than 2 to the power of m minus 1, which means n over 2 to the power of m minus 1 is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 over 2 to the power of m minus 1 and greater than or equal to 1. So which means the floor of that is in fact just 1. And that means I I'm able to obtain m and therefore the answer is log of n plus 1 base 2 ceiling. So 
So that ends the solution. If you like this video, feel free to check out other videos on my channel. I have a lot of videos like this when I would go over either topics discussed in math competitions or problems that appear in math competitions or suggestions by the users of the channel. If you have any suggestions or problems, feel free to send them to me at mathcompetition at coach at gmail.com. I will see you in another video.